Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today I'm going to be talking about something that is often overlooked, I find, with a lot of my clients when they start working with me in our design firm here in Nashville. And that is, can your ceiling hold the weight of the added mass that you're going to put on it for sound isolation? It's not uncommon to have you know, two layers of 5 8 inch drywall, so 4.4 pounds per square feet or more added to a ceiling that was only meant to hold a half inch thick piece of drywall. So before you go adding a ton of weight to your ceilings, watch this lesson to understand what you need to look for and understand different construction methods to make sure that you have enough support in your ceilings before you design your soundproof home recording studio or soundproof space in general. My name is Wilson Harwood and I am a studio designer and soundproofing expert based in Nashville, Tennessee. And I am here to teach you all about how to soundproof. Without further ado, let's dive into this lesson all about what to look for to make sure that your ceiling will hold that added weight of your soundproof room. All right, let's dive in. So one of the main things people come to me in for is soundproofing a garage. And I want to start with a garage, but we can talk about other rooms as well. But this picture I'm about to show you is something I've seen so often, especially in the Los Angeles area, because these garages were built, you know, around the 50s, 60s, and they're everywhere. And they're honestly a great space for a home recording studio. But you may have to think about a few things first before you think about just creating that beautiful cathedral open ceiling that everybody wants in their home recording studio. So let me show you this real quick. All right, so here we have a picture of one of these garages in the Los Angeles area. And I'm sure some of you from that area, if you're watching this, you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense for sure. Um, so basically what you have here is a ridge beam, which is going to be in all sorts of garage structures like this, or even in your home. And then you have your, uh, roof joists going on the side here. And then this is a unique construction. They've actually got these, uh, but look like two by sixes flat and then roof sheathing on top. And then there's some other joists going across and sort of a unique pattern holding up the, you know, the garage opener here. So the problem with this system is you might walk in and be like, oh, we're just gonna build our studio across these beams right here. We'll just add drywall to that, no big deal. We'll use the acoustic clips right off of there, no big deal. This will be easy. It won't cost a lot of money, right? That's what a lot of my clients think. Now, the problem with thinking like that is you are surpassing all of the physics and construction <laughs> techniques that are needed to support a roof structure like that. So basically the roofs that were designed in that photo that I just showed you um, were not meant to hold a lot of weight below. In fact, I'd be surprised at how much weight they actually were designed for to hold on top of the roof, but that's a whole nother story. But when we add a bunch of mass, a bunch of weight to the bottom side of our um, studios, when we you know use our acoustic clips and hang two layers of drywall at least, we are adding a lot more weight than was meant for that roof structure. So I always tell my clients, you know, there's definitely construction techniques that we can use um, without talking to a certified um, engineer. But a lot of times I would say you need to hire a structural engineer. And we've done this with several of our clients, especially in that Los Angeles area where they've wanted to elevate their roof structure up in their garage. And it's worth the extra money to just get a certainty that your ceiling will not fail and collapse the entire roof in on your new studio. Obviously that could kill you. There's lots of reasons why that's a bad idea. And the, the mistake I see a lot of people making, which I don't want you to make is trying to save a couple bucks not hiring a structural engineer maybe also just taking the advice of their builder who said ah no nah, it'll be fine you just need to be careful with that because most builders have never done this type of construction before where they're layering multiple layers of drywall or osb on the ceiling and changing the, the actual structure of the system so for example when we hired a structural engineer for one of my clients they had an actual nailing pattern and a way to create exactly what the client wanted, but using all of their analysis and data to make sure that it was done right. So they specified the type of board we need, the number of nails in each board, it was something like 20. Um, so 
very, very specific things you need to do to ensure that your ceiling will not collapse and fall in on you. So I hate to tell you, I don't want to ruin the party, but basically you really need to think about this before you go into thinking that you can just open up the ceiling on a project. Let me show you some examples of this in some of our uh, design software that we have here. So you guys can see this in action in some of my own design work. All right, so this is an example of a project that I've been working on where this is a ground up build. So we're building this in the backyard but they do have this cathedral ceiling right here, which is really a nice uh, aspect of this design. And it's kind of cool because not only do we have the cathedral ceiling, but we also have a flat roof part of the building over here. So you can kind of see how both work together. The thing I really want to show you guys is that we've sized both the rafters here. So these individual rafters right here, we've sized, I believe they're two by 12s in this case. Um, uh, two by tens and we have also sized the ridge beam right here um, to make sure that it can hold and support all the weight of our structure so when you're doing this you know we have our double uh, two by fours right there we've got another set of double two by fours right here and then we ha have another set of double two by fours right here supporting this large beam, like an LVL beam, laminated vinyl uh, lumber beam. And that is going to support the entire uh, structure of our build. So this is totally common if you want to have a uh, cathedral type ceiling. It's just that most people don't realize that and they think that they can remove the horizontal joists, which are happening right here. And those are actually really important for the structure of the building itself and the structure of your roof. So if you take these out, you need to support them later using collar ties that are higher up. Now, some of you might be wondering about what I just mentioned there called collar ties. Now, collar ties are the, the one term for describing a higher up beam to support a gable roof structure. And you can raise your collar ties up, but there is a limit. And usually to code, to international residential codes, uh, it's about one third of the height from the edge of the gable roof to the peak of the gable roof. So where the, the current flat part of your roof is, where the bottom line of the triangle on your gable roof is to the peak only you can only raise up the the rafters one third um, to raise your ceiling height so if you were thinking you would raise them up really 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 high again you would have to talk to a structural engineer to ensure that you did that correctly and if it's even possible without a uh, catastrophic failure so again i hope this lesson is just teaching you some things to think about so you know the right questions to even ask before you start building in your garage or in an existing room. Now, I want to show you an example of a project we're working on now, which is really great if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of your height in your garage, you can circumvent the roof altogether, which is honestly, in my opinion, the best way to go. So let's take a look at that. So here you can see we have a garage. Um, part of the garage is going to be used for storage and things like that over here. Um, we're gonna also put all of our baffle boxes and our mechanical situation over here. Um, but what's really unique about this system is that we've got a bunch of pre-engineered um, you know, roof trusses here. Um, which is typical in, in some people's garages and certainly in certain constructions. And what I've decided to do with this client is we're actually going to, it's a small gap, I think it's about a quarter of an inch, but we're gonna actually not have our uh, studio ceiling, which is gonna be flat, touch these exterior beams. And what this does is it means we don't even have to worry about the load weight put on the bottom of these joists. And most of the times people don't realize this, but this joist right here is going to have a dead load that usually can support about one layer of drywall at most. And that's about it because it was designed as a garage. It wasn't really meant to hold a bunch of weight. Um, and a lot of the weight of the, these types of joists is on the top for your roof. But the, what's known as the bottom core dead load, which you can ask these joist manufacturers about, is really what you want to do. And that leads to another thing that I've learned in my design firm, which is always ask the joist manufacturers. You don't necessarily need to hire a engineer. And a lot of these joist manufacturers have an engineering team on staff that will do this stuff for free and just make sure that if you're going to modify um, what their joists were used for, you're going to be able to get some free advice on if that's a good idea and how to do it if so. Um, so keep that in mind. But if you have the ceiling height, this is a way to go. We actually 
are gonna have, you know, fairly thick. Again, we I always over-engineer my joists, but these are gonna be two by 12s going across to hold the weight um, that we're gonna put on the ceiling, which includes not just the drywall, but also the um, ceiling acoustic clouds that we're gonna be hanging from it as well. So keep that in mind when you're designing. So I hope this lesson has helped you understand that there's a lot that goes into building these soundproof rooms that is beyond the soundproofing itself. It really comes back to just basic construction, understanding how building construction works and understanding some of the restrictions you'll have and the roadblocks you may run up against as you're looking for that perfect place for your studio. So when you walk into that beautiful garage with a potential for a big elevated, you know, what we call a cathedral ceiling, Definitely think twice, make sure you understand the nuances of how you're gonna build it because you might run into a situation where you realize you can't get that elevated ceiling without extreme amounts of costs and adding in a lot of new beams and supports to do it. So I just want you all to be aware about that. Again, my name is Wilson Harwood. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I am a soundproof designer and soundproofing expert based in Nashville, Tennessee, and I have a design firm where we design you home recording studios and soundproof spaces all over the world. If that's something you're interested in, definitely check out our free soundproof clarity call. You can just go to soundproofyourstudio.com and click on the I want some plans button and you can jump on a free 30 minute call with me. If you are not ready to do that, definitely check out my free soundproofing workshop. It is 30 minutes of in-depth teaching going into how to build a soundproof studio in a garage, a backyard, and a basement. So it's super, super valuable. You can watch that right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next week with more information on soundproofing and room acoustics.